When you are born, if your mother had high cholesterol when she was carrying you, you were not born with a normal artery. You were born with a fatty streak, a thin film of fat lined your artery. Now, if you were born with a normal artery, then your parents fed you the usual American diet. Then by the time you are 10, you have your fatty streak. So this begins in utero and the first decade of life, based on the lifestyle we have chosen to lead. This is not a phenomena that existed 5,000 years ago. Correct? So this is a new phenomenon. So have our bodies changed? No, our bodies have not changed. Was there a defect in our bodies? Were we made imperfect? No, we were not made imperfect. This is your heart. This is the size of your heart, size of a small grapefruit. Those red lines that you see surrounding your heart, which you can barely see, the size of a pencil tip, are called coronary arteries, and that's all that keeps you alive. Now let's talk about the risk factor that affects 70% of us. The largest number in the U.S. Women of color. Other than Asian women, Native American women, Hawaiian women, Alaskan, original Native women, Latino women, African American women, 70% overweight. 70% overweight women of color. And that in itself clogs your arteries with no other risk factors. That comes with all the other risk factors, but that in itself clogs your arteries. You cannot have a normal body, you can't have normal organs, you can't have normal arteries, and you can have more chances of turning your normal cells into cancer cells. You all go to prayer service on, you have prayer classes on Wednesday and Thursday and Bible classes on Tuesday, and you all spend all this time in church. What on earth are you praying for? World peace is fine. We can have world peace. But what are you praying for? Are you praying for the discipline to respect your body? For the discipline to drive past Popeyes and McDonald's? Do you call on your prayer partner when you're about to take that left turn into McDonald's? That's what your prayer partner is for, to keep you out of McDonald's. Not unless you all stand around on Wednesday night just praying randomly, talking about everything for world peace or whatever. That's what you should be praying for. Respecting your temple and having the discipline to respect your temple. So let's look at the food that causes disease. Number one is salt. Anybody with a family history of hypertension should not be eating salt nor serving it to their families. If you put a salt shaker on your table, you are causing a death rate much higher than any of you put a gun on the table. Because we are the ones with hypertension in this society. So why would you give your children a high blood pressure? Salt belongs in the bathroom for gargling and in the basement for the next snow. <laughs> it, has no, it has no business being on the floor where the kitchen is. None whatsoever. Otherwise you're killing your family. That's one little white substance. The next little white substance is sugar. We were enslaved in order to cut sugar cane so Europeans could have sugar. And now we are dying like flies from sugar. The very substance that enslaved us has now enslaved us again. American Heart Association had my favorite ad which says you are looking at the most lethal weapon in America. And the fact is, more Americans die by the fork than any other weapon. That's because so many of them use it irresponsibly, fill it up with high fat, high cholesterol foods, foods that load up your blood with cholesterol, build up plaque in your arteries, increasing your risk of heart attack and stroke, and threatening your life. So the next time you pick up a fork, remember to handle it as you would any other weapon for self-defense and not self-destruction. Thank <laughs> you.